Gina. Today I'm going to show you how to make a really cute little necklace and a set of earrings with the newest treasure bag, which are, there's actually two of them. One is the amber and aqua and the other is the sapphire and champagne. These beads, however, are in both bags, so it will look the same regardless. I am making a set of earrings. I realize there's only one of these little rose pendants in your bag. However, I have put onto the website packages of three of the pendants. So if you want to make the earrings, you certainly can. You can just come and pick up a package. If you did not get the treasure bag, of course, you can come and get the triangle beads and the pendants and make this. This is a very simple link to process, and this is what it looks like. It's really a pretty little pendant and necklace set, and the earrings turn out really cute. And I'm going to show you how to make the ear wires and the little matching triangle on them from eye pins. So um, I hope you enjoy it. And like I said, if you want to make this, you can because all the stuff is available on the website. Let's look at the material list, which I'll probably repeat myself again in. So let's just go do that. Okay, for this project today, I'm going to be showing you how to make a very simple necklace with some of the items from the newest treasure bags, which were the amber and aqua and the sapphire and champagne bags. In either bag, you have the items that I'm going to be using today. So it's going to look exactly the same regardless of the bag you have. And if you do not have a bag, I do have some of these pendants in packages of threes on my website, um, ggctreasures.com. So you can get a package if you'd like. Now, only one came in the treasure bag. I'm going to be making a set of earrings too, using two more. So, um, if you want to, you can go to the website and get an, a package and make yourself a set like I'm going to, or you can just make the necklace because you do have one of these in your treasure bag. So that's what we're going to be using is the little 18 karat gold brass pendant that has a CZ on the leaf and on the rose, and this is what it looks like. We're going to be using that. And then we're going to be using the strand of these triangle beads. These are clear triangle beads and they are about six millimeter, four by six, something like that. I have a bunch of these on the website also, so you can get these too. So this project is very simple to accomplish because all the things are available even if you didn't get the treasure bag. So we're going to be using this strand and then adding to the treasure bag, we're going to be using some eye pins and we're going to be using some jump rings. These jump rings are measuring about five millimeters round outside diameter and you could use a six or you could use a four. You'll just have to kind of finagle your length a little bit if you change the size, but you do not have to use a five millimeter round. You could use whatever size you want. I'm also using one of the lobster claw clasps in the lighter gold color in the treasure bag. And then I'm going to be using about an eight millimeter round jump ring outside diameter to clasp the lobster claw clasp with. I'm using some eye pins and you're going to need about 24 eye pins. So what I have done is Matching this gold is a little difficult. So I found some at, where was it, Michael's, that were the same color as the gold in my pendant. So what I did was I just went to Michael's with my pendant and I matched it. So you can do that too. Um, I actually did this in the past with a different pendant because it was the same color gold. So I have some jump rings and some eye pins that are the same color gold. Now, if you cannot manage that, you can do this in two colors of metal. So what I would do is I would use a silver color in my eye pin and then try to match the gold with your uh, jump ring. 
Having two tones like that works well if you balance them out and use both colors in your design. So you can do that too, just to make it a little easier. So I'm using these eye pins. They are about, and let's see, about an inch long, maybe just a little bit over an inch. You can use a longer one if you'd like. You'll just have to cut it down. So that's what we're going to be using. So let's go ahead and get started with this project. Okay, to start this project, we're going to make little components that look like this, and we're going to make 24 of them. Of course, that's contingent upon the length of necklace you want to make, and um, you can make more or less according to your length. What we're going to do is that we're going to use a little eye pin. I have one that's about an inch long. You can use longer ones if you want. You'll just have to cut more down. We're going to drop three of our crystals onto this. And with these triangle crystals, you kind of want to make sure they're all kind of pointed the same direction. So try to put them on with the pointy side down towards the loop. Now, if that doesn't matter to you, don't worry about it, but I like them to be somewhat uniform when they lay on my piece like this. So, once you get those on, then just position it in your hand to where you can hold on to it and then grab your flat nose pliers and right just slightly above the last bead, you're going to bend your wire straight over into a 90 degree angle like this. And then you're going to cut it down to about a quarter of an inch. And then grab your round nose pliers and towards the tip of the plier, these are a little wide so I'm going to go quite a ways up towards the end and I'm going to place the end of the wire flush with the round nose pliers and then I'm just going to start to turn. I'm going to turn as far as I can and then I'm going to take my hand out, turn my plier over, place it back in, making sure it's towards the tip of the wire and continue to turn until I get a nice little loop like this. Now if it's off center you can grab towards the back of the loop, arrange it a little and then close it again. That way you can get it centered nicely. And then you can just grab a pair of flat nose and a pair of chain nose or two flat nose, whatever, two chain nose, and just make sure that your loops are the same direction. So if you need to turn them, you can turn them and make sure that both loops are the same direction and basically the same size. So I'm gonna adjust this loop just a little bit more here. And that is what that should look like. So you're going to make 24 of these. And let me get you in close so you can see them nicely. And then once you have made 24, we'll come back and we will start to link them together with the pendant. Okay, so as you can see, I have made my 24 units. And now I'm going to set up my pendant so that I can start connecting my units to them. So I have two of my five millimeter round um, jump rings and I'm going to grab two pairs of pliers. So I've got a chain nose and a flat nose here. I'm going to pick up one of these jump rings. My opening is here. I'm going to place a plier on one side of the opening and then another plier on the other side of the opening and I'm just going to twist it open like this. Now I'm going to put the pendant on this jump ring. Now this pendant has a tiny little hole so you're going to have to use a gauge that will work I think this is probably probably about a 20 gauge. It seems to be going through um, 21 gauge, something like that jump ring. So just be aware that if you have a really thick jump ring, you're going to have to get a different one because it won't go through. Then I'm going to close this by twisting it back, just like this. Make sure it's closed tightly. You can shimmy it a little bit and get it closed tightly. 
and this is what you should have. Now we're going to put one more because we want to have our components come from side to side. On this one, because the loop on the flower is horizontal or flat against your bead mat, and the jump ring that we just put on is standing vertical. So we have to put another one that will go flat so that we can put our units on either side. So we're going to attach one more jump ring to this just so that we're in the proper position. So again, just twist it open and put it onto this loop. Then pick up one of your components and slide it on. Then I'm just going to change direction. I'm even going to turn it over just so that I can put one component on one side of my flower and the other component on the other side of the flower just like this. And then I'm going to close this jump ring. Make sure it's closed well. And then I am just going to turn this all back over and lay it out so you can see what I have done. So now I'm backwards. Let me turn it back over again. So now I have a jump ring on the flower and then a jump ring on the jump ring that's on the flower and then two components connected to that jump ring, just like that. And now I'm just going to start putting my components together by connecting them with the jump rings. So I'm just going to open another jump ring and I'm going to grab my component and then grab another component and put them on the jump ring. Just like this. I guess I could get you closer and you can see I just have them dropped on this jump ring and then I'm going to close it. And that's all there is to this. We're going to just continue doing that. We're going to put 12 on each side. So we'll count from the very first component, continue putting 12 of these on. Let's do one more on the other side. So we're just gonna open the jump ring. We're going to grab the component that's already attached, put the jump ring on it, grab a, one of our other components we've made, put it on, and close the jump ring. And we're going to continue doing that until we have 12 on either side. Now, you can make more components if you would like a longer necklace. I will measure this at the end so you know exactly how big it is so that when you make yours, you can judge what you'd want, what how long you want it to be. We can always put extra jump rings on the back and because we're using a lobster claw and we can make an extender. So if it's a little bit short, then you can make it longer with jump rings. If it's a little bit long, then you can leave off a component or two so that you can make the length you would like. Anyway, let's continue putting components on this necklace. Once I'm finished, I'll come back and measure it for you and we'll put the clasping on. Okay, so now you can see I have put all of my units on to my necklace, so 12 on each side, and this is what it looks like. It measures to be about 19 inches at this point. It's eight and a half on either side, so you can adjust the length that ends up to be by the time I put my clasping on, close to a 20 inch necklace. So if you want it shorter and longer, you adjust by adding or subtracting units. And you can also use different size jump rings to achieve different lengths and use more or less units. So that is completely adjustable for you. Now on the ends here, I'm going to put my clasping and what I have decided to do is use a large jump ring, this is an eight millimeter jump ring, and a five millimeter jump ring, jump ring to attach to one end. And then I'm going to use a five millimeter jump ring and a lobster claw to attach 
to the other end to make my closure. So on this end, I am going to go ahead and grab my jump ring. I've already opened it. You just, of course, place your plier on either side and open it like I showed you earlier. And I'm just going to drop it on my component and then I'm going to drop my clasping on and then make sure my clasp is the direction I like it. So I like to make sure that the little spring component is out towards the outside and I'm just going to close it. And then I am going to grab a jump ring, a five millimeter jump ring and an eight millimeter jump ring and put it on to this side and close the small jump ring. Make sure the big jump ring is closed well too. And now I have a nice closure for my necklace. Let me show you what it looks like. <clears throat> Let me turn my little heart or my little rose over. And this is what it looks like. It, it's really a pretty necklace. So now I'm going to make a set of earrings. Like I said earlier, I have these packages of these little pendants in packages of three on the website so if you want to make the earrings you can do that I do not have any ear wires that match you could just pop these on an ear wire I'm going to make myself an ear wire with my eye pins because they match now this is a short eye pin a longer eye pin would work better for this process however this is what I have so I'm going to attempt to use these they will be a small ear wire I'm going to use a couple of triangle beads on the ends just to make it kind of a matching look with my necklace. And I'm going to try to find two of my eye pins that are really close to the same length and the loops look pretty close to the same. I'm going to gra gather everything together, get some bailing pliers, <clears throat> and we will go ahead and make the earrings. Okay, to make this earring, we are going to just file the end of the eye pin a little bit just to make sure that it's not sharp and it won't hurt when you put it in the ear. So just kind of file it round like that. This one wasn't too rough, so it's smoothing up pretty good. You can use a little metal file if you'd like. You can use, I'm just using a coarse fingernail file here and that actually it doesn't feel too bad okay so that's what I have now I'm going to grab one of my triangle beads and drop it down on to the eye pin right here now you don't have to do this part and you can just drop it on a regular ear wire if you'd like but I'm going to make one like I said to match the metals so I have this laying to where my loop on the bottom of the eye pin here is flat against my bead mat, bead mat. And I want to keep it that way. So I'm just going to hold it. And then I'm going to put my plier right above that little bead. And I'm going to just bend my wire straight up. So this is what you have. Just like this. Then I'm going to grab my bailing pliers. You can use your round nose pliers if you'd like. However, it's not really a big enough loop. You can get something round and just wrap it around the, the uh, round thing that you're using, like a marker or something like that. But I'm just going to grab my bailing pliers. And I am going to, I'm actually going to place it this way because I want this size right here for my loop. So I have my little L shape away from me like this and I am just going to start to bend. And I'm going to bend all the way around and then push this part all the way around until I get a nice round circle just like this. Now I have to straighten it out because I mangled it. So. I'm going to push that little bead down, straighten this out a little bit. And then on the very end here, 
I am going to bring the wire out a little bit. Just like that. So that it's not round. And I can bring it out even a little bit more. Just kind of flare it out like this to have it more of the shape of the ear earring that I want. Now, my little bead you can see is floating around. So I'm going to come down here in the bend I originally made and I'm going to increase that bend by just bringing it back a little bit to keep that bead in place a little bit better. Now I can just straighten out the whole thing. If you want to, you can lightly tap it with a hammer and um, make sure that it kind of work hardens and stiffens the wire a little bit more and straightens it out a little bit. But at this point, this is what this looks like. Now my bead just wants to float around. It has a pretty good size hole. So I'm going to try to bring this back even a little more and then straighten it out. Like that. And then I'm going to grab my little rose. I'm going to open the bottom loop here and put my rose on the proper direction. So you want to make sure that the front of your rose is towards this part of the loop, just like this which I didn't seem to do. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do that again. I thought I did that. Oh my. Okay, so I'm going to open this and I am going to put this on. I, I can't believe I did that, but oh well. You know, things happen. Okay. So now the front of the rose is towards the deep part of the loop here so that it hangs correctly in your ear, just like this. And this is what this looks like. Let me get you in really close so you can see it. And this is what it looks like. Okay, so I'm going to make one more and then I'm going to show you the set together. Now, you can bring your loop back if it doesn't feel like it's going to be in your ears secure enough. You can adjust it a little bit. Get your other one made though and then adjust them together so that you can make it, make them match really well. Just like this. Okay, let me get the other one made and I'll show it to you. Okay, so here's our pretty little set all together. I think it turned out really nice and it's something I would definitely wear. And you can dress this up or down because it is just the clear crystal. It can be very fancy or it can be very fas or casual. It just depends on the way you dress it. But this is what this looks like all together. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, consider subscribing and maybe clicking that notification bell so that we can continue making videos or making jewelry, not videos, making jewelry together. And I hope you have a good day. Bye-bye.